Hi guys, so welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Dr. Nidhi Shastri and today's video is going to be about how I managed my monthly stipend and how this could probably help more people who uh, do get stipend or salaries but just do not know how to invest or where to invest them. So a couple of disclaimers before we proceed ahead. Number one, I am not a financial strategist, neither do I have any uh, commerce background. Whatever I'm be speaking about is purely based on the opinions and the advices given by my father, his financial team, and of course, you know, the agents where I have been uh, investing. And number two, this video is not sponsored uh, by anyone. So all the investments I'll be talking about are purely again based on my experience and based on what I personally do. Uh, you can of course find other portals, uh, you know, uh, for these particular investments. Without any further ado, let's move to our main topic. Now, talking about investment, why is investment necessary? Uh, so a lot of youngsters uh, around me also feel that, you know, we should live in the moment. Instead of investing, why not splurge it on the things that we always wanted to buy but couldn't buy because our parents didn't allow us or our financial conditions didn't allow us. Now, uh, you know, now that we're independent, the the whole idea is that why don't we spend more why don't we buy the things that we always wanted to but here's why we're going wrong because with independence also comes a sense of responsibility now uh, i might be addressing this video to completely uh, you know young people who are just starting out and who have just started earning or this video could also be seen by uh, people in their 30s or their 40s now the two most important factors that are necessary to think about when you're investing your uh, income somewhere is number one, how much do you want to keep as your uh, expenses and how much do you want to keep as your savings? And secondly, where do you want your savings to go? And what are the short term and the long term plans that you have with your savings? Coming to the first part, the expense and the savings. Now, there are a lot of portals or websites who actually tell you that this is a particular percentage of money that you should be investing. But I don't think that one percentage kind of fits everyone because it depends on what stage of life you are at. For example, someone who is very young, who is just starting out and has a well-to-do family who, uh, you know, is not depending on this person's salary. Uh, and, you know, if you are not married yet or if you don't have uh, any other requirements, then in, in those situations, uh, you know, your expenditure is going to be much less and you can actually save a lot. Now, similarly, if there is someone who, uh, you know, has just been recently married, the spouse is also doing very well, then your uh, savings could go a little lower than, you know, the younger ones. But of course, you can still invest a lot because you need to plan your family, you need to plan your future. Next, someone maybe who already has children uh, would need to start planning for their children's future, would need to plan for their children's education. So the expense is going to be much higher compared to the savings because most of the money is going to go in uh, their day-to-day -day family expenses and the education. Now coming to how much to invest, what you need to do is basically make a list of your monthly expenditure. Now uh, this would include any kind of expense that you're making for anything. So. Uh, but when I started out, I made a list of my expenses and those basically included uh, number one, the uh, hostel mess fees. Uh, the second one was, uh, you know, the money that I'll be paying to the uh, lady who does the laundry, the lady who does the sweeping. Um, then, you know, uh, I get a couple of uh, groceries every week. So those also went into my expenses. Me any EMIs that I need to pay uh, also go into my expenses list and uh, along with that any travel that I'm making or the shopping etc also go into the expenses every month. So I made a list of that and I added about 6-7% to 7 of my salary more into that as emergency fund. Now I keep this in another bank account because I have uh, two bank accounts. So I keep it in a bank account which I do not use very frequently. So in case I urgently need that money, I'm just going to transfer it back to one of my main accounts and then uh, you know use utilize it. This uh, is not to be put in any investment because what happens is if you are putting it in any investment and you urgently need that money, you might not be able to get it back at that moment. It could take a couple of days till they uh, you know uh, are able to debit that money, to, uh, credit that money to your account. So ideally keep it in another bank account. If uh, you do not trust yourself with that money, probably give it to another trustworthy person like a relative or a spouse who could give it to you whenever you need that money. So now that we've spoken about uh, how much you should invest, ideally, let's talk about where you can invest them and why you need to think of both the short term and long term. 
Now coming to your short term investments, these are uh, you know investments that you would be requiring in the near future. For example, if you're planning your marriage or you're planning to buy a vehicle or you're planning to buy a house shortly in the couple of uh, coming years and you need to make the down payments of any uh, or if there is any other expense that you're planning out besides these as well that need to be uh, you know that need to be saved for for at least 3 to 4 years but you do want a certain amount of returns then short term investment is what you should think about and the long term investments are again as the word says going to be a long term planning that you're making uh, for example someone from a private sector could be going into some pension schemes where they can invest a certain amount of money and get pension after uh, they retire from their private jobs Uh, or you know you could be planning for your old age and the other health expenses that come with it so uh, again you need to divide uh, this as per your priorities so in my case uh, there is an almost equal division of the long term and the short term planning that i have done so my first investment is an insurance policy that i put about 15% of my stipend to uh, this is something that is a long term planning because i'm going to get the money as a lump sum uh, after about 30 to 40 years so i need to pay a certain amount every month in order to be able to get a lump sum return after in at that particular age so the second investment i make is again about 15% of my stipend and this goes into a chit fund uh, for which uh, the returns of which i'll be getting after 2 to 2 and a half years now this is a short term planning and this is mostly for uh, my wedding and uh, you know for my marriage life ahead uh, so uh, i do want to contribute towards my wedding as much as my parents would so i have started to plan for that as well the next investment i make is about 8 to 10% each one is into the stock market where i buy uh, a couple of shares every month depending on what is doing well and what is not depending on the nifty index etc uh, again i did uh, read a lot of portals for this i did attend some webinars as to learn about smart investing uh, in the in the uh, stock market and uh, there are monthly magazines also that i have subscribed to which guide me uh, more about it so that's how i invest in the stock market uh, 8 to 10% also goes into buying digital gold again as i mentioned that i have been saving for my wedding and uh, gold of course jewelry is one of the most important aspects in a wedding so uh, this is my contribution towards that where i put in a particular amount every month to buy digital gold from a particular portal then about 8% goes into mutual funds uh, again this is uh, something where i uh, invest through a portal where i can get the money within 3 to 4 days if i request for that so uh, this is used you know in terms of any any uh, sudden expense that i have but something that i have to pay for in the couple of coming days uh, or if there's a travel expense that needs to be made again this does involve its own risk so uh, you know you need to invest in good mutual funds next i invest about 8 to 9% in liquid funds now with liquid funds what i have observed is that obviously the returns are never very high uh, compared to say mutual funds but uh, there is a very slow and steady increase i have not been watching the growth as much because i have just put that money there and left it and i plan to you know i intend to use it only in terms of uh, you know something where i genuinely would need to remove that money otherwise it's growing at its own pace and i'm not disturbing it i am not uh, keeping a check at it it's just growing so uh, that that one thing i'm very happy about with the liquid fund then about 3 to 4% of the stipend goes uh, towards a health policy that my parents had purchased and which i have taken over recently since i started earning uh, a health health policy is extremely important as important as you know a life insurance policy because uh, you know any unnatural event could occur at any point of time and money should not be a basis of whether or not you are able to afford good quality of treatment and hence investing in a good health uh, policy is very very crucial so you know you need to Uh, by a good medical claim policy that would give you a good amount of cover uh, in case of any unlikely event so to summarize about 15% goes towards the uh, insurance policy and towards uh, the chit fund about 8 to 10% every month goes into the stock market and uh, the digital gold 8% goes into the mutual funds and the liquid funds and about 3 to 4% goes for the uh, health policy So this was all about how I manage my stipend every month and I genuinely hope that uh, you know y'all could take back uh, something uh, from this video. So all the best with your investments. I hope you chose uh, your investments very wisely and if you found this video useful then please do like, share and subscribe.